God bless everyone this morning. How are we doing? Good morning. Good morning. We are going to get started for our Thursday morning live. We are going to do our weekly recap of our Bible study. So if you missed it on Monday night, we are going to go through the whole thing this morning. And so I pray that you will be able to join us and that you will dive deep into today's word with me. If you are joining, say hello in the chat, take a minute to share, tag a friend, uh, give it all those likes and <laughs> a couple of hearts so that we can get others to join in with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Say hello in the chat where you're joining in from. And we are going to jump right in. So I am going to pray and then we're going to get started. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy, God. I thank you for this opportunity that you have given us once more to be able to study your word, to feast on your word this morning. Lord, I thank you for breath in my lungs, for strength in my body, Lord. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to be used for your glory and your honor today. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me, that you would teach through me, Lord, or that everything that we say is accurate, Lord, and, and according to your word. Father God, I pray that every revelation and understanding, that it comes straight from you, Lord. You are the source of our truth. You are the source of our understanding, of our wisdom, my God, and I just pray that you will be glorified in everything that we do today. Lord, I give you honor. I give you glory. I give you praise praise because there is no one else that is due the honor and glory that you are due, Lord. You are worthy of it all. And so I praise you, God, and I glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, sis. I miss you too. I miss you too. Hopefully we'll see each other soon. All right, so let us jump right into our study this morning. As you all know, we have been unlocking the power of God with our prayer, with our praise, by studying the Psalms. And so the Psalms are such beautiful prayers and songs of praise that truly speak to our humanity. They speak to our emotions. They speak to how close we can be um, to the Lord through our worship, through our daily prayer and, and, and singing onto him. And so uh, we are in week 50 of this study. So I'm going to give a quick recap of where we left off last time. And then we're going to jump right into today's study, which today we're going to be jumping into Psalm 121. Um, and then we'll talk about some key takeaways, next steps and announcements, and then prayer requests at the end. So if you can't stay the whole time, I pray that you would at least let us know in the chat if you need prayer so we can come in agreement with you and flood the gates of heaven with our petitions. Amen. So last week, we actually had a special guest speaker. We had Sister Janice, um, who was leading us in the beautifully profound Psalm 139. And so this psalm really reminded us of the depth of God's love for us and his intimate knowledge of us, right? He knows everything about us. He knows how many hairs are on our head. He knows how we were formed because he formed us in our mother's womb, right? And so God knows everything about us. He knows where we're at. So no matter where we go, God's presence can find us, right? There's nowhere where we can flee from his spirit. And so we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are knit together with purpose by the hands of God, the creator of all the universe. And because God knows all, it is so important for us to also invite God to search our heart, right? That's how David ended this. He's like, search me, Lord. You know me best. You would know me best. And I pray that you would search me and lead me and show me if there's any wickedness within me. So, and lead me in the way everlasting. And so I have a tongue in my mouth. I'm just going to finish chewing it because it's like bothering me. <laughs> um, but that was our last um, uh, Bible study last week. And so it was just such a beautiful, beautiful psalm. And if you missed it, I would encourage you to go to our YouTube page or Facebook page, wherever, our learning portal, watch it and get yourself connected. Amen. And so with that said, we're going to jump into today's study. All right. Psalm 121. 
So something that I um, didn't realize until I started preparing for this week's study is that Psalms 120 to 134 are actually labeled as songs of ascents, okay? And so these 15 psalms, they were traditionally sung by the Hebrew programs who ascended, right, the uphill road, dangerous road to Jerusalem to attend the annual festivals in the temple, right? Three times a year that God said, come up and worship me. And so those three times they would make that trek, that pilgrimage. And so these songs are songs of pilgrimage. They're songs of journey. And they were songs to keep them focused on the Lord, to keep them energized, to keep them empowered. If they were tired, right, on this journey, that they could sing these songs to keep themselves moving, to keep their focus on the Lord. And so it really does make sense when you look then at Psalm 121, which is what we're going to study today. It makes, I just feel like it, it un unveils a different level of understanding of the psalm when you think of the context of that, right? And you're like, man, that's why they were talking about God's protection and God leading them because they this song was being sung as they traveled and they were putting their trust in the Lord as they took every step on this hard, arduous journey, right, to be trekking uphill to Jerusalem in order to go and worship the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and read the whole thing, Psalm 121, there's only eight verses, and then we're going to go back and break it down. So let's go from the top. He's, uh, it says, a song of ascents. I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. And so let's break this down. What a powerful sound. Um, I was sharing with our class on Monday that this is actually probably one of the first set of scriptures that I memorized, but I memorized it in Spanish because our old church in New York, at the end of every service, we recited this entire psalm as a congregation and then ended our service, right? And it was such a powerful thing. So even as a young kid, I was declaring the the power of this psalm, um, again, in Espanol, <laughs> but it has always stuck with me and I could probably do it right now from, from my heart. Um, and so it is, it is a powerful, powerful psalm. So let's take it back to the top. So the psalmist, right, we don't know who wrote this, but the psalmist starts off with a really powerful declaration, right? I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. And so here we see that this singer, right, this pilgrim, uh, this person on this pilgrimage, right, they are looking to the hills probably the distant hills of Jerusalem, right, as they travel toward the city, right, to fulfill this journey, this act of obedience to go and worship the Lord. And so the seeker understood, right, that the group didn't need to arrive at Jerusalem in order to receive help or in order to be under God's protective care, right? They understood that God was with them every step of the way, right? God was with them even as they journeyed, right? He would watch over them on the journey. And so God is just as present in the journey as he is in the destination. And so when we think of our life journey, right? When we think of, of all the things that we've got to trek towards, all the things that we've got to go through, all the different seasons, all the different places, it might feel like we're always on an uphill battle. But 
we may know that even though we're trying to arrive at some destination, we're trying to arrive at some place where we feel where we'll have the fullness of the Lord and the fullness of what God has promised us, we have to remember that God is here with us every step that he that we can just look up that we can look up to the hills and know that he is our source of help that he is with us as we take every single step and so i may not have arrived to where god wants me to be or where he's leading me to be but i am just going to keep my eyes fixed on him. I'm going to keep my eyes looking to my helper who's going to help me get there, right? I'm going to keep my eyes fixed and I'm going to keep trusting. And so even though we know that these hills, right? Um, these hills, uh, in my study Bible, I'm looking down at it, it says the hills that the writer sees are the hills of Zion and Jerusalem. And these were Old Testament symbols for the dwelling place of God, and that, and is where God chose at the central, as the central place of worship. And so, they're they've got their eyes fixed. I'm going to go meet the Lord. I'm going to go and worship my God. But I'm actually going to continue to worship on this journey, and I'm going to keep my eyes lifted because I know that where does my help my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the creator. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and who made earth. I'm looking to this mountain and, and it looks, and it is holy and is the dwelling place of God. But I know that my God is even greater than that because he made that mountain, right? And so that is the trust that this, um, that these worshipers are putting in the Lord as they are making their journey. And so how powerful is it that the creator of the world is our helper, right? The creator of the world is looking to help us and guide us. And so it's so important for us to remember that this is where our help comes from. When we need help, when we're going through situations, we need to know that the only place we can turn to is turning to the Lord God Almighty. He is our only source of help. Not because, oh, we only have one choice, but like he's the only source. He's the only one who can truly help you. He is the one who can help you. And that is why we must look to him. We're not going to look anywhere else. We're not going to look at or make other make idols out of anything else. We're going to look to the Lord because my our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And, you know, to be a helper, think about it. The fact that God is the creator, supreme being, the almighty, and yet he still delights in extending himself to come and help his, his people, right? To be a helper is not a lower level of ministry, right? Sometimes you think, oh, I'm, I'm just helping them or I'm just a helper here. Or, or maybe as a spouse, you're like, oh, I'm just meant to be my husband's help me, you know, but that is holy work. It is holy work to help other people. It is holy work to sustain other people who need you. It is holy work because if God says that he is our helper, if he assigned the Holy Spirit to be our helper, then it is Holy Spirit work to be a helper in other people's lives as well. So it is my privilege and honor to help my husband. It is my privilege and honor to help my children. It is my privilege and honor to help those in my community that need me. Because if God is my helper and he is showing me that helping is the best way to serve, then that is what I am going to do as well. Amen? Does that make sense? Praise the Lord. So this next set of verses says, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither sleep, slumber nor sleep. So God is helping his people, right? Make this dangerous trek. We got to remember that they're going uphill. Also think of where they lived. These are rocky mountains. These are dangerous. Like, have you ever hiked up a mountain? It is not actually an easy thing, right? And, and yet when we go hiking, we get ourselves the best, you know, hiking boots and socks and we got poles and we got things to help us. But no, these people were traveling with their entire families. They're carrying their food. They're carrying their tents, right? And they are wearing sandals you know? And so this was a treacherous 
journey. This was an arduous journey. And yet they were confident that God was not going to allow their foot to stumble uh, or stumble. It, they were not going to allow that their feet would not be hurt, but that God was guiding every single step. And so God would help his people by establishing them in a firm place, allowing them to stand on a firm foundation, right? And not allowing their foot to be moved. And see, yes, their feet were moving, but their feet were moving in forward progress, right? They were moving in forward progress, but they shall not be moved off course. They shall not be moved to a point where they were going to stumble and fall and get hurt. No, they were trusting that the Lord God who says he will not allow your foot to be moved, that on this journey, that they would be able to move forward in progress, following and trusting God, but knowing that they would not stumble. It even reminded me of when we were studying in Psalm 119, um, verse 165 says, great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. See, when we love the word, when we love Jesus, we can have great peace knowing that nothing is going to cause us to stumble because our eyes are fixed on the right place and our trust is in the one who can keep us. Amen. Amen. Let me know if you're with me, people. <laughs> Does this make sense? And so as we continue to walk on our journeys, we can trust that God is keeping us firm, that we shall not stumble because we are standing, standing on the rock, right? And so we can stand in God's grace. We can stand on the gospel of truth, right? We can stand in courage and in strength. We can stand in faith. We can stand in the fact that we have a liberty and a unity in the Lord. We just stand on the Lord, right? Standing on his word. We can stand in perfect peace in the complete will of God. And you see, I um, here on the screen on Facebook, you can see that I italicize the word keeps because the word keeps is actually used six times in this short psalm because in the Hebrew, it's the word shamar, okay? And so it's translated as keeps and keeper and as preserve, but it's the same root word in the Hebrew of shamar. And shamar means to keep. It means to guard. It means to protect. It means to save like a watchman, right? What is a watchman? The theme here is that God, he will watch over his people as a watchman watches over the city or the party of travelers, right? And that's why it says he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. There is an emphasis here that our God does not get tired, that our God is able to keep watch, that he is watching us, that he is with us, that he is guarding our every step. Again, when we keep our eyes focused on him, we're going to continue walking on this journey. We're not going to turn right. We're not going to turn left. We're going to continue to go where God tells us to go. We're continuing to trust that he's got us and he has us and he will guard us and he will protect us like a watchman who keeps watch. He's just there on guard, ready to protect us. And he does not slumber. He does not sleep. And so no matter what we're going through, no matter how um, rocky the road may be, we can keep on trekking. We can keep on trekking, trusting that God is my keeper, that he is my keeper. He is my watchman. He is he and he doesn't get tired. He is always, always watching. He is always watching. And it's such a powerful thing. We can, when we look to the Lord, when we keep our eyes fixed on him, we can have confidence, confidence in the fact that my God does not sleep. Our God does not slumber. He does not need to rest. He doesn't get tired, right? And so, and because it's repeated here, he who keeps you will not slumber, shall neither slumber nor sleep, right? Like this is, it is an emphasis here because this is what separates our God from the everything else. God's watchful eye is always open. And
and he's looking on us with love and he's looking upon us with care and he is keeping us standing. He's keeping us standing. And you know, even uh, before I go into that, that next thing, just talk, talking about the fact that we shall stay standing, you know, it, it reminds me of it in Ephesians chapter six, where it says, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand in the evil day, right? And so this is why it's so important to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord, to be in his word, to be worshiping, to be praying, to be fasting, to be, you know, continuously covered in the armor of God so that we can stand. There are going to be things that come against us to try to make us stumble. There are going to be things that try to catch us um, off guard or try to make us leave the course, right? To get us off course, take us, make us take detours. No, no, no. If you are, are focused on the Lord and you have the full armor of God on and you keep your eyes on him, you will not stumble. You will be able to keep standing. And so again, this idea that God does not sleep, it's a powerful one. You might think, okay, Sarah, you've said this like seven times now. Yeah, but it's powerful. And, you know, if you remember um, it, it's in first Kings when Elijah confronts the prophets of Baal, right? The false idol of Baal on Mount Carmel and right. Elijah says, Hey, you make an altar, you call on your gods, see if it'll accept your sacrifice. And then once you're done, I'll call on my God, I'll make an altar and you'll see that he'll respond with fire. Right. And so the, the prophets of Baal, they decide to do that, right? And, and, and they're like, fine, yeah, sure, we challenge you. And so they start doing their dances and they're screaming and they're shouting. They're making this whole thing and nothing is happening. And so Elijah actually mocks them, right? And when, when Baal doesn't respond, because again, he's a false idol, saying, oh, perhaps Baal is sleeping, right? And he must be waking up. Maybe you should you should dance and sing a little louder, or shout a little louder, right? And so this idea that Baal didn't respond um, because he might be sleeping really shows us the difference between, you know, Elijah going, I know my God doesn't sleep. I know my God doesn't slumber. I know that he is ready to send fire when I call in his name. And that's what sets him apart. Right. And so I just thought that was an interesting parallel between how Elijah used a fact about God to, to show how he is different than any other false idol out there. Right. He doesn't God doesn't need to be woken up. God is always on guard. He doesn't slumber nor sleep. And of course, this was a comfort to the pilgrims, right, on their way to Jerusalem because they did have to sleep. They did have to set up tents. Right. And and and. Um, and shelter for the night. And they and they probably were going through enemy territory, right? Or even just the, the animals and, and the wildlife that they needed to be protected from. And, and still, they had to trust that God was going to guard them while they slept because he didn't need to. Amen? And so, continuing on with this idea, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. All right. So again, this is another way that God is keeping and protecting his people. Not just that my feet are not going to stumble, but that he is going to cover me. Right. Think about the, the fact that it was hot. Right. That the brutal rays of the sun in the Middle East. Right. It could be like almost like an assault on the traveler right how strong that sun would be especially on you know on their way and so it's hot and they're thirsty and they're doing all this physical movement and so god promised care for the traveler right he promised that he would be their shade that the sun wasn't going to strike them down the sun wasn't going to hurt them nor was the moon going to hurt them the darkness would not hurt them no 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 instead that god again he is their keeper and the shade at their right hand and so that idea of God being shade, that points back even to, uh, you know, right when the Israelites were crossing the, um, 
you know, after the Red or crossing, crossing the Red Sea, right? And, and the Lord said, I will, I will be with you and I will lead you cloud by day and fire by night. And, and even through the wilderness, right? I, he didn't take it away. And so he was their protector and their covering and their leading. And so it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing that God is our shade. He is our covering. He is our protector from the elements. Um, and the same word for shade in the Hebrew is also the same word for shadow, right? We think of Psalm 91.1 where it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so this, this is our God who is preserving, right? He preserves us. He keeps us safe. He covers us. He protects us in his shadow or in his shade. And so there, you know, this also points to 24 seven protection, right? Sun, I'm protected. Night, I'm protected. I don't know where to go in the day. I got my shade covering me. I got my Lord leading me. And at night, I also do. I do too. I don't have to worry. The Lord is protecting me day and night. This is 24 seven care, right? He, he who keeps us, he preserves us day and night. Amen. And so here in these final verses, we get this word preserve again, which again is so Shema, that idea of God being a watchman, God being a guard to save, protect, and keep. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And so we can trust just the same way the psalmist trusted that that God is a God who protects. We can have great confidence in God's protecting power, right? Evil's going to come. Things are going to come, right? But God will protect us and preserve us from all that evil, right? And so, and, and this problem is really comprehensive, right? He says, I'm going to put the Lord protects you or preserves you from all evil. He preserves your soul and he preserves your going in, you're coming out now and forever, right? This covers every part of our life. This covers everything that could possibly happen to us. God preserves us, right? You see, we are served. This doesn't mean we don't go through stuff. We're going to go through hard journeys. We're going to have to walk some stuff out, right? But when we go through adversity, we will come out victorious, right? We, Because we have the Lord who is doing what? Preserving us, keeping us through those journeys. Things that should have taken us out, won't. Things that should have made us quit, we won't, we'll still be here. We'll, st we'll still be continuing to trek along because we have the Lord who is preserving us. And he is keeping us safe now and forever. And, you know, I think of preservatives, right? Like what we use that word, oh, I'm going to preserve this. I'm going to save it for later. I'm going to, or we put stuff in food to preserve it, right? It keeps things fresh longer and it keeps food from going bad and so and it keeps food from going bad despite the elements right despite the hot air even our refrigerator right our refrigerator preserves our food because it keeps the conditions cold even when it might be hot on the outside and so this is our god what he does he no matter what the conditions are happening around us, he, he creates an environment under the shadow of his wings, right? In, in his shade that protects us from the outside elements, right? And so I can keep bearing fruit. I can still be fruitful in every season because my God preserves me. He keeps me. He guards me. He doesn't allow my fruit to go bad. He doesn't allow me to go bad, right? Any weapon formed against me shall not prosper because the Lord, my God, preserves me through it. And we think of 
puts the most um, common preservative, salt, right? Even from the from ancient times, salt was used to preserve food. And God calls us to be salt of the earth, right? He wants us to be seasoned with salt. So that way we can stay what? Preserved. Preserved during these times that we're going to be going through. Times are tough. We're all going through stuff and times are only going to get tougher, but we can trust that our God protects us, that our God guides us, that our God loves us and he will preserve us through the trial. Trials will come, but I'll be preserved. I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to be defeated. I'm going to come out of this victorious. Amen. Amen. I think those are all my notes, people. Practical application. How do we, what, what are we taking away from today? How do we apply this to our lives? How do we turn this word, right, into something we can live and truly trust in the Lord? I want to remind you that the creator of heaven and earth is your helper and he is your keeper. He is your watchman. You can be confident in that. You can take comfort in that, that you've got the best person who's got your back. Not even person, right? Like you've got the best in your corner. And that is the creator of the universe. And we can take comfort in that the Lord keeps us and he preserves us day and night. Day and night. <clears throat> and as I said before, we are not promised a life free from adversity. But we are promised that God will be with us. We are promised to be preserved through it all and that we will come out victorious. And remember that the keeping power of God sustains us until the very coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He said from this time forth and even forevermore. Jesus says, I will be with you even to the end of the age. And so God will be with us. God is with us and he will keep us and sustain us until the Lord Jesus returns or we go to him first, right? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. You are so awesome and mighty, God. Lord, we thank you that you keep us. We thank you that you preserve us. We thank you that you watch over us. We thank you that our feet are on solid ground. We thank you, Lord, that you do not slumber nor sleep and that you are always attentive to the needs of your people. We thank you, Lord, because anytime we need help, we just could put our eyes on you and you are there to meet our needs, Lord. And so we are so grateful, Lord, that you are creator, maker of heaven and earth, and that you come to our rescue, that you love us so much, that you bow down, that you that you extend your hand, Lord, that you reach down towards us. That's what I meant, that you reach down towards us, extending your hand to come and help us, Lord. And so, Lord, I love you and I thank you, Lord, for your sustaining power, your keeping power. And I pray that this word would, that faith would rise in each and every one of us, that we're not alone and that God is keeping us, preserving us through these trials so that we can testify of who he is and how he is the keeper of Israel. He is our keeper. He is our God. Lord, we thank you, my God, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. A couple of announcements and then we'll take some prayer requests if anyone has any. So please feel free to uh, put it into the chat and we will pray for you. Um, if you're new to our Bible studies, I want to let you know what our weekly schedule typically looks like. So on Monday nights, we have a Zoom group discussion at 8 p.m. Um, Eastern time on Monday night. So that's when we kick off our weekly Bible study. Then on Tuesdays, I send out an email with the PDF that downloads the whole presentation. I also load it up into the workshop. Um, and then on Thursdays, if you ever miss a Monday or that time doesn't work for you, I'm here on Thursday mornings for the weekly live recap on Facebook and on Instagram, 9.30 a.m. So set your reminders. And then by the end of the week, I also try to load up the videos into the workshop, YouTube, and our other places where um, you can access them. So if you ever miss it or want to rewatch, you're more than welcome to do that. And there's many places for where you can grab it.
If you would like to join our Zoom group discussion on Monday nights or to get the emails and to get the downloads, then I would recommend that you would register at soulofworship.com forward slash online Bible study. And then you can also create a login to our workshop, which is at soulofworship.com forward slash workshop. There we have all the recap videos, the PDF downloads. So we're on week 50 of the study. There's 50 videos waiting for you to go and watch if you missed any of them or just want to you know, watch them again. And plus there's other studies that we've done over the last several years, four plus years. Um, there's many, many um PDF resources there that you can use to teach others to just, you know, dive deeper for your own edification. Um, but all these resources are available to you at soulofworship.com forward slash workshop. If you don't already support and or connect with the Soul of Worship ministry, I would love for you to, um, to do so. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, subscribe on our Apple podcast, create that login to the workshop or online learning portal. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you feel so led, you can support the ministry. You can sew into sew um, by going to soulofworship.com forward slash partner, or you can support the ministry shop where we have t-shirts and mugs and um, a couple of sweatshirts left. We also have books. Um, and so definitely check out soulofworship.com forward slash shop in order to support, um, the ministry in that way. If you don't already have a copy of the book, uh, worship, are you making a sound? I would encourage you to grab it. Um, it is an awesome resource, not because I wrote it, but because the Lord gave it to me. And so it's a 12 week Bible study on the power of worship and praise takes you through many, 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 many scriptures in the Bible. You actually, you know, I tell you where to read questions to answer, right? Um, and it's uh, truly an in-depth look at the way worship has played a role in the life of God's people from the beginning. And so I really encourage you to take get a copy. You can find it on Amazon or you can buy it directly from me at soulofworship.com forward slash book. I also created a video course that goes along with each chapter of the book. And that you can find at soulofworship.com forward slash course. And so each chapter has a video lesson. I answer the questions based on my understanding. So if you want to compare your notes to my notes, um, it is a great way to use it. Or I also have other ministries that are using the online course as a way to go through it as a, a Bible study with, with their church. And so after they have a group discussion, they play the video and then you just kind of get, um, you know, additional ideas based on, you know, the thoughts that I have regarding each of the scriptures that are presented in the book. So many different ways that you can use it and um, we're open to all of them. So just find out more about how to get um, access to the course at soulofworship.com forward slash course. We also have a daily devotions group, uh, daily devotions with soul of worship ministry is a private Facebook group where every single morning, uh, six days a week on Sunday, I, uh, we're hoping that you're going to the church. Um, but every single morning, Monday through Saturday and posting up uh, scripture with a weekly theme and questions to answer as well. Um, the theme overarching right now is living a life of worship. And so every week we've been going through, you know, living a life of rejoicing, living a life of gratitude, living a life close to the Lord. Um, this week we're talking about the beauty of holiness. Um, and so there is a lot going on in there. would encourage you to jump in and participate answer the questions let us know what you're thinking it's a great um it's a great time and then if you don't like facebook or don't have facebook i am also uh trying to keep up with loading up any any videos whenever i go live um to explain any of the scriptures getting those into the workshop as well so there are other places where you can um grab onto that if you are not into facebook group type of stuff <laughs> All right, that is all that I have this morning. And uh, let's see. Oh, yes. All of our help comes from the Lord in every aspect of our life and everything. He is our sustainer. Yes, yes, yes. Um, praise the Lord. That was over on Facebook. Praise God. So how can we pray for you? If anyone has any prayer requests, please um, put it into the chat and we will be lifting up these prayer requests onto the Lord. Yes, sister. Amen. It's, uh, our sister's asking for prayer for David Rivera. He needs liver and heart transplant. The good news is he made it on the list to receive, but it is a two-month wait. 
pray that the Lord will preserve, yes, David, that he will be able to have this life-saving surgery. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before your presence, God, thanking you that we're able to come in the name of Jesus and that through the blood of Jesus, you make us righteous, Lord, and that we're able to access the throne room of God and ask boldly in the name of Jesus and, and asking for your help, Father God. And so, Lord, we petition and come in agreement uh, for Brother David Rivera, Lord, who needs this liver and heart transplant. Lord, you know what he needs, Lord. And we're praying in the name of Jesus that you would deliver what he needs, Father God. Lord, whether it's you who completely transforms his heart and his liver, Father God, which we know it is possible because there's nothing impossible for you. Lord, you can do the transplant, Father God. You can do, give new organs, create new organs within him, and we believe that it is so, Father God. But Lord, if you want to use... Um, the medical system, Father God, and, and the um, donation list. And Father God, we pray that that he would, that the perfect timing would come, Lord, for him to receive these transplants, Father God. And so, Lord, we, we know that they say it's a two-month wait, but you, God, are in control of it all. And it is your timing that prevails. And so, Lord, we pray that your will will be done, Lord, and that he will be preserved, just like your word says, until that perfect day that you are able to, to provide him, Lord, with these new organs. And we're believing that you are keeping him, watching him, and preserving him through this trial. And Lord, I'm believing also that his him and his family are drawing closer to you through this time, and that your miracle working power will be revealed, and that you will be glorified above all things, because of this situation, Father God. Lord, we're believing and we know that nothing we go through in life is wasted, that the journey is part of our testimony, God. And Lord, if we just keep on walking, my God, just like your word says, that we will not fall, we will not stumble. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your sustaining power over David and over all of us in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we can we come in agreement and we pray for, for your continued guidance, Father God, for your continued protection and provision in our lives, Father God. Lord, we pray that you would continue to be who you say you are, which it seems silly to even say that, Lord, because you don't change. You are the keeper. You are our 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 preserver, Lord. You are our help. And so we know that it is us who needs to keep our eyes fixed on you. So Lord, we pray that you would um, help us to keep our eyes on you because we know that you will guide us. We know that you will protect us. We know that you will provide for us, Father God. It is us that needs to continue to put our trust in you and you will always remain faithful to deliver, my God. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I just bless every single person who's who's on this um on this live today, those who joined earlier and had to leave, or those who just got a, a bit of it or have been here the whole time. Lord, we just pray that you would move in their lives. Lord, I pray that you would speak into their hearts, Father God, Lord, that you would reveal your glorious splendor to them, Lord, and that you would reveal your power and your will for their lives, Lord. Let your will be done in each and every one of our lives, Lord. Open up our hearts, change our lives, change our thought processes, change, Lord, our mentality, change our mindsets so that we can trust that you are our keeper and that you are with us preserving us to the very end. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, well, that is all that I have for you today. I pray that you have a wonderful rest of the day. Um, if you need anything, you know where to find me, and I will talk with you all later. All right, God bless you.